Hi, my name is Carolina Serena and they are Noelia Queiran, Joan Vendrell Hi. and Sonia Fernandez. Hi. We are a research group from Tarragona, Spain and we would like to show you a video summarizing the study we just published in STEM cells. However, before to see the video, we would like to introduce the topic for a little perspective. In the last years, Adipose tissue has been proposed as an interesting alternative source of mesenchymal stem cells for regenerative cell therapy. In fact, it has been demonstrated that the immunomodulatory properties of adipose stem cells are more potent than those derived from bone marrow. That is why, apart from being the main energy storage depot, adipose tissue should be considered as an immune organ at the crossroads between metabolism and immunity. In this context, local factors of adipose tissue may be taken into consideration and we hypothesize that the donor phenotype determines the immunomodulatory capacity of adipose-derived stem cells. So our work highlights the importance of studying stem cells taking into consideration their physiological environment. Moreover, it is also relevant not only for understanding the functionality of adipose-derived stem cells in terms of cell-based therapies, but also for their role as key regulators of the immune response. So enjoy the video and thank you. Obesity is an associated state of chronic low-grade inflammation. Adipose tissue is now considered as a bona fide immune organ at crossroads between metabolism and immunity. Besides adipocytes, adipose tissue contains macrophages, lymphocytes and adipose-derived stem cells. ACEs first participate in the turnover of mature adipocytes. Second, have cell renewal capacity and finally are recruited to sites of tissue damage to regenerate new tissues and repair defects. But if the function of these cells is affected by obesity, is still unknown. Focusing on obesity and diabetes as metabolic disorder, disorders that may affect the immune response of ACEs, we obtain tissue biopsies from different donors. Adipose tissue is digested with collagenase in order to obtain the stromal vascular fraction, from which ACs are isolated. It is really important to phenotype the human AC population. We use flow cytometry. Obese, and particularly diabetic ACs, show an, an increase of inflammatory markers with a high secretion of interleukin 1 beta. Given that inflammasome signaling mediates interleukin 1 beta secretion, we check the protein expression of the main inflammasome components. Interestingly, a significant activation of these components were observed in ACs from obese and diabetic individuals. Our data reveals that ACs from obese and diabetic patients are able to migrate and invade other tissues. ACs from lean subjects were unable to invade. By contrast, ACs from obese and diabetic patients showed a robust invasion capacity. Accordingly, the metalloprotease activity was higher in obese and diabetic ACs. Since cell migration and invasion are crucial steps for phagocytosis, we hypothesize that ACs might be acting as non-professional phagocytes. Interestingly, ACs from lean, obese and diabetic subjects could phagocyte bacteria. Furthermore, obese and diabetic ACs show a higher phagocytic activity than lean ACs. Emerging evidence suggests that ACs may affect the properties of immunomodulatory cells. First, we observe a decrease in gene expression and secretion of the transforming growth factor beta-1 in obese and diabetic ACs. Second, it is known that conditioning media from lean ACs promotes M2 macrophage phenotype anti-inflammatory. We observe that conditioning media from obese and diabetic ACs promotes M1 macrophage phenotype inflammatory. And third, conditioning media from lean ACs suppress TMB cell proliferation. By contrast, conditioning media from obese and diabetic increase significantly TMB cell proliferation. To corroborate these results, TMB cell proliferation was visualized using verde U immunofluorescence. 
given that inflammosome-induced interleukin-1 beta secretion was activated in obese and particularly diabetic ACs, we pretreat healthy ACs with interleukin-1 beta and significantly increase cell migration and confer invasion capacity. Conversely, treatment of obese and diabetic ACs with TG beta-1 combined with interleukin-1 receptor antagonists significantly decrease cell migration. Nonetheless, our study, study unveils both TGF beta-1 and interleukin-1 beta as potential key players in the dysfunctional AC behavior observed in these metabolic pathologies. To sum up, obese and diabetic ACs have a higher migration, invasion, and phagocytic capacity and less immunosuppressive properties than lean ACs.